Welcome to another night in the This is your 10 minute recap of the last night of NBA hoops. And this was opening night, meaning we had the ring ceremony, the Nuggets, get their rings after winning their championship last season. And obviously all the players were very excited, but it was a rematch of last year's Western Conference Finals. It was Lakers, it was Nuggets, a series that was a sweep for the Nuggets last season. And as you might expect, the Nuggets handled their business again tonight. It was a game that saw the Lakers take an early early 8-4 lead, but from that point on, it was basically all Nuggets. The Nuggets built a lead as big as 18 points and didn't really ever seem to be struggling or concerned about the game. Uh, they, they had the lead pretty much the entire time, and they won the game by 12. Starters were pulled with two minutes left, and the Nuggets prove that they are still the team running the league right now. Over the offseason, all we heard is, oh, they lost their depth, and all these other teams got better. And to the Lakers, credit their second leading score was Tory and Prince with 18 points uh, but you know it, it's just not there for the Lakers right now and the Nuggets still are a step above them I think that's clear from what we saw tonight uh, you know Nikola Jokic once again runs a triple double in his season debut 29 points 13 rebounds and 11 assists for the Joker and is joined by his sidekick Jamal Murray 21 points six assists and two two rebounds for Murray. A uh, really solid game for both of them. Jamal kind of kicked it up in the second half. Jokic had 19 in the first half, 10 in the second half, and it was just a, a very solid showing from the Nuggets once again and showed why they are still the best team in the league. Every single starter for the Nuggets scored in double figures, and they all looked really solid. Even Contavious Caldwell-Pope, who most people would consider to be the fifth best starter for the Nuggets, scored 20 points himself. 8 of 12 from the field, and wasn't really just from downtown. He did hit two threes. Historically, KCP more of a three-point shooter, but that wasn't really his bread and butter tonight. He was attacking the rim, and it worked for him. 20 points for KCP. Aaron Gordon with 15, seven rebounds, five assists, and Michael Porter Jr. with 12 points and 12 rebounds. So just really solid night from the Nuggets, but you know, people may say, oh, they have their concerns about the depth on the bench, and the bench, to be fair, wasn't a lot of score. The leading score off the bench was actually Reggie Jackson with 8 points, who was a plus 11, really solid outing for him, and was the first guy off the bench for the Nuggets. I don't think a lot of people would have bet Reggie Jackson as the sixth man for this team, but that's what he was tonight, and he played solid. Christian Brown as well had a couple of and ones uh, and attacked the rim very well, kind of finished through contact and over people. So Christian Brown only had five points, but the impact was there because the buckets he made were big ones. Then you look at Zeke Naji, who just got paid four points, not a huge game for him. Peyton Watson only had three points, but there were flashes. And the interesting part is that Julian Strother, who was the standout in the preseason, didn't even play for them. Julian did not play a single minute in this game. Even when the benches were cleared, guys like Braxton Key, Gillespie, and Jalen Pickett got minutes, but Julian Strother did not. So I think that's something to monitor. But the Nuggets, to me, are still the best team in the NBA right now. They shot 41% from three on the game and 53% from the field. Jokic is still getting guys easy looks, which we saw with his 11 assists, but all the time it's throwing over the top of guys. It's fitting bounce passes to KCP on the fast break. There are just so many different things that Jokic was doing that was helping them win this game. And the big thing is that he sustained it through two halves. 19 in the first half, 10 in the second half, really solid performance, kind of all around outing from Jokic. But when you look at the Lakers, it was a very good first half from Anthony Davis, who had 17 in the first half, but in the second half scored zero points, a big fat zero for Anthony Davis in the second half. And I think you could argue that was the biggest reason they lost that game, because when they went into halftime, it was a single digit game. I believe they were only down seven, but you know, they 
had a couple runs in the second half to bring it back to single digits, but Anthony Davis was pretty much nothing for them in the second half, and it's just something that you need more of. Something to monitor going forward, LeBron James only played 29 minutes, and Darvin Ham was asked about it after the game if this was kind of what to expect now with LeBron, and he said that, that the likelihood is yes, they're going to keep LeBron at a lower minutes level. 29 minutes might be what to expect, which is tough for the Lakers because LeBron played plus seven and Cam Reddish plus seven were the only guys with big pluses in terms of plus minus. They were awful with LeBron off the floor and they just couldn't keep up. So if you're going to have, what is this, you know, 19 minutes of the game without LeBron, it's going to be tough for the Lakers to compete, especially with Austin Reeves not having a very good game. 14 points, four of 11 from the field. He didn't even really get much going at all until the second half and was extremely passive out there. But shout out Torrey and Prince, really good game for him in his Lakers debut 18 points 6 of 8 from the field hit four threes and Cam Reddish off the bench quietly good like I was saying seven points four rebounds and a block uh, could be a contributor for this team we'll see what he ends up being not a great Gabe Vincent game three of eight from the field with six points but the Lakers just need more they need more from a lot of different guys they need Rui to step up a little more only three of ten from the field they need Reeves to step up more and they need Anthony Davis to be better in both halves but the Nuggets are still a step above them despite all their additions this offseason. The Lakers have not caught the Nuggets and the top story tonight is that the Nuggets still run the league. But now let's move into some other topics from the night. Now normally this is where we'd shoot around the NBA, look at a bunch of different box scores and just who won, what teams won, what games, what players looked impressive. But since it was opening night, there were only two games on the slate for today. So we can take a little bit of a deeper look at Suns versus Warriors. And the Suns might be a little better than we thought. Without Bradley Beal, they take down the Warriors. Now I know the Warriors didn't have Draymond Green, but I think the Warriors still look pretty solid overall. Clay was missing a, a pretty noticeable amount of shots, especially earlier on. Uh, but Chris Paul was creating a lot of looks for players. I thought Moody looked all right. I thought Kuminga looked all right. But the Suns just, they, they won this game. They won this game outright. And Devin Booker was awesome from the start. He had 15 points, 15 out of his 32 in the first quarter. And Booker is out to prove something this season. It's pretty clear. And the Suns are going to be competitive for the finals this season. And they look great. They, they got 18 from Kevin Durant. Rant, but it's the other guys who really stepped up for Phoenix. I think a big thing that people talked about was Nurkic really an upgrade over DeAndre Ayton. Did that trade really make a lot of sense? But Nurkic tonight was awesome. 14 points, 14 rebounds, and a block, as well as three assists. He's a solid passer for a big man, but that wasn't the big thing. It was the rebounding, and it was the scoring. The scoring was fine. He hit a layup on a pick and roll with Devin Booker down the stretch that basically won the Suns this game. It was very perfectly executed. And that's another big takeaway from this Suns Warriors game is that Devin Booker is a point guard. He's a competent point guard and he's really developed at it and really, really improved. And it's noticeable. Eight assists tonight. He's, I believe he assisted on the last three Suns baskets. And he went from a guy who was the scorer early on to the assister and the facilitator as the game went further and further. And Devin Booker is a just a, a great player. And I think there's an argument he could be in MVP discussions this season, I think. I think he's that good and you know because it's not just the scoring anymore forever with Booker it was just the scoring but now it's the playmaking on top of it eight assists to go with his 32 points great game for Booker but also Josh Akogi, another guy I wanted to mention because Akogi was great tonight 17 points do it and all defensively was kind of all over the place defensively you know as he usually is but to me, the big thing was the scoring. 17 points for Akogi, 7 of 9 from the field, uh, you know, 5 rebounds as well. He's a solid rebounder for the size that he is. Uh, but Akogi, if he can be this as the Suns' fifth starter, that's going to be huge for them because a big thing is going to be all these teams are going to have their eyes on Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, and Bradley Beal. Uh, you know, Nurkic is going to occupy someone down low. It's kind of a similar situation to what we saw with the Cavs is do you have to guard this fifth starter and if Josh Akogi can be someone you can't leave open it's going to dramatically change this team and what they look like Eric Gordon with 10 points off the bench not super efficient but solid nonetheless and let's pivot to the Warriors a little bit 
as we talk about their night. So Kevon Looney, 7 points, 11 rebounds, does what he always does. But Steph Curry hit a huge shot in the clutch to keep it close. They end up losing, but good game from him nonetheless. 27 points. It's 15 for Klay Thompson, but 6 of 18 from the field. Uh, Chris Paul, 4 of 15 from the field. As a team, the Warriors only shot 36% today, and that's a surprising thing. The Suns were playing all right defense. That was kind of the biggest question with them, is would the Suns be able to play defense? And I thought their defense looked fine, and I think Chris Paul with the second unit really helps the young guys 12 points for Kuminga 11 for Moody and I actually really liked what I saw from Dario Saric off the bench as well seven points seven rebounds two blocks they needed you know another center to step up really uh, with the guys that they have but Saric looked good the Suns take down the Warriors the Suns look great and Devin Booker looks awesome but that's going to be it for tonight's NBA action only two games but we're going to do this every day we're going to cover every NBA game we're going to get deeper into the NBA season than we ever have before and we're not just going to do one story we're going to cover everything so if you're interested think about subscribing but that's going to be it thanks for watching this debut episode of another night in the nba but that's going to be it for me you know thanks for watching i'm herm have a good one